Hello, and welcome back to the Web Dev Coach, where my goal is to teach you web development. This is the first video in a series of videos where I'll be going over the Free Code Camp Timestamp Microservice Timestamp Microservice uh, Project. It'll be written in Node. I'll be using Express on top of Node, the Express framework, and um, I'll. I'll show you step by step exactly how to go about creating this project from scratch. I will not be using Glitch like they recommend in Free Code Camp, but um, I guess I'll get to that when uh, we actually take a look at the project. Now, let's start with a project overview. Um, this project that we're going over is the Free Code Camp uh, timestamp microservice project. Basically, we'll be building a full staff stack JavaScript application that looks something like this. Basically, we can go to and make a get request to uh, you know the project URL forward slash API forward slash timestamp and uh, add a timestamp um, as a parameter in the URL. And basically what a parameter is, is this last part of the URL. Of course, I'll be going over that during the series. Now, when we go to that um, parameter, I mean, I'm sorry, when we go to that URL with that parameter, we'll get back a JSON object that looks something like this. And um, that's basically the project that we'll be creating. In this series of videos, I'll be going over exactly how to set up your environment from scratch using NPM, uh, the node package manager, to install everything and um, how to get a server uh, going. Um, and hopefully I'll get to that in this video. Um, I'll also introduce you to the concept of routes and exactly what it means to make a GET request to a route, how exactly to make those routes, and how to respond uh, to requests to your routes. And um, also in this video series, not today's video, I will go over route parameters, which, which is basically the last part of the timestamp URL that you saw earlier. So API forward slash timestamp forward slash, you know, 2015, 12, 25. Um, in this video, we'll be installing Node and Express and um, We'll be uh, listening, creating a server, and listening to requests on a port. Uh, hopefully, I'll also create an example route, and um, there'll be more to come in future videos. I'll, I'll dive in more into exactly what routes are, but um, in this video, I'll start you off with a the hollow world of uh, routing in Node. First thing is first, you want to go ahead and install Node.js onto your local machine if you have not already. The way to do that is uh, you want to go to uh, nodejs.org and you want to install the latest LTS version of Node. LTS stands for long-term support, which means that developers of Node will be supporting uh, version 10.15 for a long time. So go ahead, uh, click that. You'll see that Node is uh, ins installed, the package is installed if you're using a Mac. If you're using a uh, Windows computer, it'll likely install the uh, executable. That'll take you to a wizard and go ahead and install Node. Um, I will ignore this because I already have Node installed on my machine. But once you installed Node, go ahead and open your uh, terminal or the PowerShell on your Windows machine and type in npm v and some um, version number of npm should show up if you correctly installed node and you'll see that I have node um, version 10.9 at the moment so if you install 10.15 you have a node version higher than mine. Anywho let's actually initialize our uh, timestamp microservice um, project. To do so go ahead and go to your project folder and type in npm I N I T and uh, timestamp microservice. This will initialize a new node project on your local machine. Um, 
it looks like I made a mistake actually. Let's make a uh, directory called timestamp microservice and uh, cd into that, into that directory. And uh, from here, we'll type in npm init. And this will initialize a new node um, package, a new node uh, project. So it'll ask a bunch of questions. The first question you'll see is the package name. Uh, go ahead and click enter. Timestamp microservice is uh, OK. The version is 1.0. There's no need for a description. Our entry point will be index.js. That's fine. There's no test command. At the moment, there's no Git repository. No keywords are necessary. The license is fine. And everything there is OK by me. If you want to edit anything, go right ahead. And if uh, you want to edit anything later, it'll be OK because you can easily edit the project's package.json to um, you know, modify anything you've created in the beginning. So again, let's go ahead and click Enter. And let's open up your favorite um, IDE, your favorite text editor. Uh, the text editor, editor that I personally use is Visual Studio Code. And let's open up the package.json that we just created. If you have a package.json in there, that means that you correctly set up your NPM, your node projects. Nicely done. All right, so now may be a good time to stop and define everything we installed and define everything we did. What we did so far is we installed uh, Node, and what Node is is basically a runtime environment for JavaScript. Let me make this a little bigger. It's a runtime environment for JavaScript, uh, which basically allows us to uh, run the JavaScript outside of our browser. Usually, we're used to with React and um, you know some vanilla JavaScript that we wrote for to work with HTML. It usually runs in our browser, but now we can use JavaScript to run on our local machine or any machine, say like a server. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're writing Node to run on a server to serve up files and to respond to HTTP requests. So that's what Node is. Again, Node runs on a server. Node runs on a local machine. Um, JavaScript usually runs in a browser. We also installed NPM. And what NPM is, is a package manager for all the libraries and all the packages we'll be using with Node, for all the libraries and all the packages that we'll be uh, using with our uh, with a project that we're running. Um, you may have seen uh, NPM used in the past. If you did the free code camp part with React, you installed React um, using NPM. Now, the next thing we want to do is set up a small server and listen on a port. And when I say listen, we're listening for HTTP requests. And I want to also make an example route. So let's get started there. Um, you'll see that the main file uh, will be index.js. In the scripts, let's write a start script. And let's just write node index.js, just like that. And what that means, I'll show you in a second, we'll have an index.js. And let's just say that console logs hi there. Open up your terminal. And uh, here, run npm start. And you'll see that it console logs hi there. It ran whatever is inside index.js and how did it know to run that start maps to uh, running the same command as node index.js which again goes inside of our index.js and uh, runs whatever is inside there now what we want to do is we actually want to install express and the way we install express is by writing in our terminal npm install Express and pressing enter. That'll um, install the Express framework into um, a folder called node modules in our um, 
in our product. You'll see it right there. And it'll also create a uh, file called packagelock.json. Ignore that for now. Another thing I want to point out is that it also adds express into a dependencies property in our package.json. This is how um, NPM keeps track of exactly the uh, packages and libraries that we're using in our project. So now we have Express set up. To use Express, we want to um, create a variable called app that requires uh, Express and actually calls it just like that. And this is how we uh, import Express. Uh, let's ignore that for now. That is something wrong with my Visual Studio code. And let's uh, type in app.listen. And it will listen on port 8000. And when we are done listening, I just want to call listening on port 8000. I want to console log that out. So now when we run npm start, and we start listening on port 8000, this gets console logged. You'll see that it doesn't exit from this state. It's still listening at the moment. However, it needs a route for us to prove that we're actually listening on route 8000. Let's get to that right now. We'll start with a get request, a uh, get route, and I'll go over exactly what that means in the next video. But um, just so you see what it'll look like, um, it'll be app.get where the first parameter of the um, that function is the URL that we want to make a uh, get request to and that forward slash means like the um, the localhost uh, 8000 forward slash. Um, a callback function is the second parameter that takes in a, I should, a request and a response, just like that. And we're going to respond with, um, uh, let's see, listening on port, actually no, time stamp microservice works. And this is what I like to call a uh, demonstration route, just um, a sanity check, just for us to make sure that we're on the right track, that we can make requests to our server. Again, I'll show exactly what app.get means, when get request is in the next video, so please stay tuned. But for now, let's prove that our uh, server is running correctly and that we can make requests to our server. Uh, let's define success. Uh, success is when I visit localhost 8000, I get timestamp microservice works. So let's go to localhost uh, 8000. And we get timestamp microservice works in our browser. So basically we made a get request to forward slash and we got timestamp microservice works right back. Nicely done. That's it for now. We, let's see what we uh, achieved here. We installed Node and Express. We learned how to start the server and we created an example route. This was the hollow world of routes. Uh, stay tuned for the next video where we actually dive in deeper into routes. I will teach you exactly what a uh, HTTP request is and I will teach exactly what a get request is, what exactly that means. And um, in a video after that, I will go over route parameters. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Please click like. If you have any questions, please leave, leave them in the comment section below. I promise I will answer each and every comment. But until next time, this is the Web Dev Coach signing off. Peace.